So, something came to my attention, and I do think it would be valuable to discuss, so I'm going to discuss that. The news tab in my Discord is a consistent source of um, varying opinions, but uh, one of those things that rolled across the news tab today was of particular interest, because I think that it highlights uh, a certain disconnect between sort of Western liberalism and reality. Um, and I wanted to highlight that. It's not that I disagree with the fundamental premise of what's being said here. It's that uh, if they were consistent with this, they would lose funding. Who's they? What's this? Well, there's a Newsweek article here. And it is, it is a good premise. I agree with it. In principle. But what it's saying is that social media giants must speak out against LGBTQ persecution in Ghana. This is by Paige Collins. And she says, In the age of uh, recognition of LGBTQ equality, it's hard to believe that legislation is draconian and odious as Ghana's promotion of proper human sexual rights and Ghanaian Family Values Bill could even exist. And more so, that tech giants purportedly dedicated to free expression could remain silent about it. The United States recently enacted the Respect for Marriage Act to protect the same-sex marriage right recognized by the Supreme Court in 2015. Same-sex marriage has been enshrined in law in most of the UK for eight years, and in just the past few years, countries as diverse as Ecuador, Taiwan, Austria, Costa Rica, Switzerland, Chile, Slovenia, all have enacted marriage equality. Yet if the Speaker of Ghana's Parliament succeeds with his plan, 2023 could be the year in which LGBTQ Ghanaians are fully criminalized merely for being who they are and advocating for their communities. According to the version published on the Ghanaian Parliament's website, the bill that the Speaker has made a political priority would criminalize being LGBTQ or an ally of LGBTQ people and would ban all speech on and offline that even remotely supports LGBTQ rights. Despite this direct threat to online freedom of expression, tech giants have remained silent on the pending legislation. Twitter opened its first African office in Accra in April 2021, the month after this bill was introduced, citing Ghana as a champion of democracy. And Meta, parent company of Facebook and Insta, frequently has trumpeted its success in bringing connectivity to Ghana through programs like Free Basics and Express Wi-Fi. Now, I want to stop here for a moment and just say how interesting it is. Say how, how fucking interesting it is that the countries which are best for uh, a corporation or the, the government that created that corporation, because remember, corporations are creations of the state, right? So, that these corporations so consistently champion and call people beacons of democracy, should they choose to support whatever the status quo is that lets these people make money. But when it comes to actually supporting real human liberty and rights, fuck that. We made our money, we're taking it and running, bitch. Um, and, and like, I think it's always interesting to remember that, especially when uh, Bill Gates is taking like, a bunch of shit, global, including, um, the, like, open ID system that he wanted, and his Vax bullshit, and when Elon Musk is doing the Starlink, uh, slash Neuralink stuff, and both of these people are doing the same thing that the World Bank and IMF and all of these, like, globalist partners have done forever, and saying that, these people are democracy, democratic stalwarts, beacons, whatever, as long as their systems are installed in those countries, that their systems are democratizing things. I just think it's valuable to remember that 
democracy is just a brand name on top of fascism. And it always has been. Because these systems aren't bringing democracy to it. It's fucking Facebook and Twitter. It's it's a corporation um, which, like, thrives on its ability to silence people. And has for a long time and still does. That's what it really fucking is. So when Facebook and Twitter tell you that they are, you know, supporting this champion of democracy, always be suspect of that. Because they're really just saying, support these people who helped us make more money. Um, but let me continue. Ghanaian law has long targeted LGBTQ people and criminalized same-sex sexual activities, but this pending legislation, which recently passed its committee sittings in Ghanaian Parliament, goes much further. The proposed law prescribes up to five years in jail for an individual who publicly identifies as LGBTQ or any other sexual or gender identity that is contrary to the binary categories of male and female. The sentence increases if the offending person identifies outside the so-called binary. The bill also criminalizes identifying as an ally, such as anyone who supports or advocates for the queer community, forces intersex people to undergo gender realignment surgery, requires all relationships to adhere to unspecified socio-cultural notions of the relationship between males and females, and threatens online platforms with criminal penalties if they do not restrict pro-LGBTQ content. So, basically it goes on to say, like, if this bill passes, sharing this article would be a crime, that you can't challenge it even in your opinion, that it's, like, actually really bad, and yeah, sure, it is, it is, it is, it is. And I'm not saying it's not. And I'm not disagreeing with the sentiment of this article. This article nails quite a few things here. Um, and any government action that wants to limit speech uh, should be quashed. Um, any of this sort of fascist cultural control should be quashed. 100%. Yes. But... You know why they won't, even if they stop Ghana? I wonder how much Ghana and the Ghanaian government have directly swayed Facebook and Twitter by being public shareholders or private shareholders now in the case of Twitter. I wonder. I wonder how many dollars of Ghanaian money goes to being shareholders in these companies. Huh. None? The Ghanaian government doesn't have a whole lot of power, globally speaking. It's just now getting, like, connected to the developed world, and so they're being championed as democracy or whatever because they're enabling a megacorporate globalist fascism. So they don't have that much sway? Hmm. I wonder who does have that kind of sway and whose government is directly involved in LGBTQ persecution and who has laws that are very much exactly like this about sharing content supporting them or being one or promoting it or not recognizing marriage or a variety of other things including violence against these minorities. I wonder which government qualifies as that and has a huge amount of money in Facebook and Twitter. Oh, right! The one Biden just sold a huge amount of weapons to. The one that the West is always helping with their genocide in Yemen. The one that is the richest royal family on the fucking planet because... The West established the petrodollar and they cashed in early. Saudi Arabia and their sovereign wealth fund that I keep on talking about has money in these social media companies. And, and wouldn't you know it, Saudi Arabia already has laws like this on the books. And Saudi Arabia... Uh, <laughs> says, like, LGBT rights, this is on Wikipedia, 
are not recognized by the government of Saudi Arabia. The criminal code of Saudi Arabia is derived from the Islamic Sharia from the 7th century Quran and is the and the prophetic teachings of Lut and Muhammad which have been meticulously preserved in the Sunnah. Homosexuality and being transgender are widely seen as immoral and indecent activity, and the law punishes acts of homosexuality with capital punishment, up to life imprisonment, fines, deportation, and flogging. Chemical castration has been used. Beatings and torture have been applied during investigation and detentions. Community violence against LGBTQ persons occurs. And let me remind you that it also occurred uh, enough in Ukraine that the UN issued human rights reports. But I'll just stick with Saudi Arabia for the purpose of this video. Because if you look at it, if you look at this, this article here, their criminal laws, their criminal laws are pretty bad. And not all too dissimilar from the criminal laws that are being proposed in Ghana. Not too dissimilar at all. So... If you look at this, not only are all these laws basically already the same as the ones that are being proposed in Ghana, but the cases have proven that people have already been arrested. People have already been prosecuted for being exactly like the Ghanaian government is saying that they will be. Already! And recently, too. Not just, like, in the past. 2020! A Saudi court sentenced Mohammed al-Bohari, a Yemeni blogger, to 10 months in prison, a fine of 10,000 rials, and deportation for a Twitter post supporting equal rights for people in same-sex relationships. He just voiced support and he got deported 10 years in prison, sorry, 10 months in prison. And he got deported 10 months in prison and a 10,000 real fine. This is already happening in Saudi Arabia. So yes, social media giants would be uh, temporarily a little bit less evil if they went against foreign persecution and prosecution of LGBTQIA plus anything activity, right? But if they were consistent, they would lose a funding source. They will play whatever line they have to. China's also pretty prosecutory of them as well. And China gets catered to all the fucking time. Any country that wants to be violently bigoted toward this community can do so without the ire of the West as long as they also fund the activities and mentalities and media and government activities, you know, whatever they do, of the West. As long as you move at the behest of these people, they will not touch you. So even if they virtue signaled by saying something about Ghana, they don't give a fucking shit about your sexual minority. Facebook and Twitter and all of these mega corporations with funding from the Sovereign Wealth Fund don't give a fucking shit about your minority representation. They don't care. You know what they want? They want money and global access. That's what they want. They don't want Saudi Arabia to block Twitter in Saudi Arabia because they said, hey, Saudi Arabia, you have to do uh, what the West says. And you have to stop being pieces of shit to sexual minorities. They don't want to lose Saudi money because... They said, Saudi Arabia, you have to be better to the people in your country who don't think like you do. They don't want to end up like Jamal Khashoggi. So, they remain silent fucking 
everywhere. Except tiny little cases where they get to virtue signal. In fact, don't be surprised if you start to see things like, you know, coup attempts in Ghana. Because when the West decides that you're, that you're one of the, the, the threats to liberalism, it's not because they want to spread democracy. It's because something interfered with their bottom line. Newsweek wouldn't have run this if it weren't convenient to the status quo. Newsweek isn't going to condemn Saudi Arabia in the same breath. Newsweek isn't going to say that Twitter and Facebook should both dump Saudi money. And if they do, after my video here, then I have more power than I think I do. But either way, that's not happening. It didn't happen, and it's not going to happen. You're going to need to put that sort of pressure on these people. And if you don't, nobody else will. Because they don't give a fucking shit about minority rights. As long as they can turn a profit and create platforms to control your thoughts. So don't let them control your thoughts. Don't let them be violent bigots, sure. But don't pretend that they are just because they interfere where it's convenient and are conveniently silent where it's not. Because that is a good way for the justifying ideologies and the powers that be to consistently get their way and get zero accountability. Because it's very profitable to bullshit. It's very profitable to act like you care when you don't care. It's very profitable to talk about trans issues or gay issues, as long as what you're doing doesn't harm your bottom line. If it does, mum's the fucking word. Because these people are either pussies, or they're just as bigoted as the pieces of shit that they don't talk about in order to keep funded and in order to keep moving. That's the truth. And that's the truth you won't hear from Newsweek. But hey, Newsweek, if you're looking for an angry anarchist conspiracy theorist, hey, I could use the work. And I'm much better equipped to be consistent than a mass variety of your writers. Not this person, though. This person brought up a good point. All I'm saying is, if you want to give peace a chance, it's going to start with your pocketbook. So don't be surprised when the people who fund you and the people you support are doing all these terrible things and don't act like another party which doesn't fund you and which is only too happy to be your new mega corporate puppet state does the same thing. Because it's all the same thing, baby. They don't give a fucking shit about you. And that's all the more reason to smash the fucking stick.